Hello everybody, this is Tim here again at Boomstick Critique. <laughs> Sorry I had to make that face. But anyway, I'm here to drop a Candyman review out. <laughs> I would have just jumped back into my Wes Craven reviews, but I figured, you know, take a little break uh, and do something else. I've been meaning to get to this film for a long time now, Candyman. It's a classic as far as I'm concerned. I have not really liked this film. I think it's uh, a really great horror film that I, I do think needs to be talked about more. I think this film is a great horror film, and I think Tony Todd's performance in this movie is terrific. Uh, just his voice and mannerisms in this movie are amazing. Virginia Madison or Madsen's acting in this movie is also great. Uh, pretty much she goes to this place called Cabrini Green, which I'm pretty sure is an actual real place in real life, to investigate this like local Candyman legend. You know, white girl and a... <laughs> Getting in over her head and, or in a <laughs> crazy shit uh, is a bound to happen. You know, it it's only, it's only happens if it's a white person. <laughs> but anyway, so she gets there. One thing I love about the movie is how this like, whole Candyman thing is like an urban legend and everything. I love that in this movie. Uh, much better uh, urban legend type movie than the movie Urban Legend. I hate that movie. <laughs> um, I hate the sequels to that movie too. But anyway, back to Candyman. Yeah, as far as Candyman goes, yeah, she goes there. She wants to investigate, like, the local legend of Candyman. There's, like, these creepy-ass, like, paintings and stuff of Candyman on the sides of, like, abandoned houses and buildings and shit. It really helps the atmosphere. The score in this movie is amazing by Philip Glass. I, that Philip Glass does the score for this movie. I love it. I love the score for this movie. I would love to get it on, like, a CD. Uh, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, the score is phenomenal. Uh, Virginia Madison's character, her hu her husband, uh, you find out is actually uh, cheating on her with like a you know, one of his young students or whatever at the place he works at. So he's pretty much a scumbag. Uh, <laughs> and she she well you, you find that out later in the movie. But uh, pretty much uh, one th another thing I love. I mean what. I'm getting sidetracked here. I'm going all over the place. But yeah, well, the main thing I love about this movie is how the movie toys with your mind. How you don't even know as like an audience. I mean, you know now, of course, because the movie's been out for a long time. But watching it, you know, not knowing anything about the movie, you don't know is Candyman even real or is or is this just bullshit? Because for a, a, a decent chunk of the movie, she's just like going around telling people there is no Candyman. It's all bullshit. It's like a local legend. It's not real. And uh there's, like, this dude who shows up there acting like Candyman and, like, assaults her. Uh, so you're thinking, well, there is no Candyman. It's not even real. And then, fucking later, the real Candyman shows up, played by Tony Todd, because she's, like, tried to dispel his legend, you know, and the, the less followers he has is the less power he has. Basically, kind of like Freddy Krueger, you know. Um, he feeds off people's belief in him or whatever, similar to how Freddy feeds off fear. But, uh... Yeah, and the character of Candyman, I just love the backstory, how he was like a slave who, uh, a, like, a, a, white, a white woman fell in love with back in the day. Heaven forbid, a white woman with a black eyes. <laughs> it's the way some people think. But yeah, I just love that backstory, how he was a slave, and uh, just how he was chased down and murdered because he slept with a woman who happened to be white. And so he was chased down and murdered because of that, and I just love that backstory. And his hand gets cut off and fucking covered with bees. And they start calling him Candyman, the townspeople do, as they, as he's dying. That's great. And it's so cool how it's like, I just love the urban legend idea of this movie. How you can like look into a mirror and if you say his name three times, he appears and guts your ass with a hook. And this guy with the hook, man, is, these death scenes are awesome. And I just, with the score combined in the movie with the gore of him like, you know, ramming it in somebody's back and out their chest... Uh, Tony Todd just does it great, and I just love how you don't know if Candyman's even actually real or not, and then the real Candyman shows up, and it's got really cool scenes, like with every time you see Tony Todd, he'll have like bees all over him, and I couldn't do that. I mean, I'm not really afraid of bees, but I mean, I still wouldn't be comfortable covered with bees, so man, I'm at you, get a thumbs up right there, Tony Todd, dude, that is amazing. Um, <laughs> I no way in hell I could go through that. But, yeah, I mean, no way in hell I'd want to do that unless I got paid a shitload. <laughs> but Tony Todd is such a great actor. Uh, he deserves more roles, way more film roles in today's age. So many shitty actors that have film roles that he deserve that, that he he should get more film roles. This, is, this guy is a great actor. But, yeah, just his voice in the stuff he says, because pretty much because Virginia Madsen has said his name three times, he's coming to claim her. 
and also to let people know he is real, you know, and get his power back up or whatever, so people start believing him and believing in him again. I I just love that idea. And he basically needs a female companion he wants to take back to, you know, hell with him or the afterlife, I guess, or whatever. So, you know, his spirit can be at rest because he was denied, you know, the love of his life back in, you know, the day. So he wants to get a new a new woman, <laughs> basically. And I, I just love that idea. So he constantly makes people think she's crazy by he just appears and disappears, you know, and shit. I love it. And there's like a scene where she gets took to a mental institution because uh, so this woman's dog is killed and Virginia Madison is, is there at the scene of the crime, so they think she did it, but of course, really, it was Candyman, and the, and the woman's baby has disappeared, or, and because, you know, Candyman took him, <laughs> he's pretty much trying to, like, alien, make Virginia Madison feel alienated from everybody, so she'll feel really alone, you know, and shit, she, thinking that she'll turn to him, you know, of course, and I just love when she's in the institution, and he, like, f floating, like, over top of her and shit, I love it, I can't stress enough, I love it, just love it, um, He's floating over top of her, and he, like, goes flying out the back of the fucking window. Uh, he just goes flying out the window, man, like, out into the sky. Um, he just disappears, and she's like, he's here, he's here. But, and he just, like, floats out of the way, and, of course, nobody sees him. I just love that shit. One thing about the movie, though, is that the movie plays it up for most of the movie. Like, is Candyman real? Even when the real Tony Todd Candyman shows up, it still pretty much plays it up as, you know, maybe this shit is just really in her mind. Maybe this guy is just not real. Maybe this all just, like her, she's just fucked up. <laughs> but, uh, but the movie pretty much makes it clear later on that he is real. I wish it would have just kept playing with that. I, that's one gripe I have against it. I wish it would have just played up that theme to the entire film, like you never knew that whether Candyman was real or not, or whether it was her that was actually that actually you know killed the woman's dog or whatever, or these other people. I would have liked that if it would just somehow been you know tricky enough to play that up. But at the same time, I like the character. I love the character of Candyman so much in this movie that I would. Um, I would really want him to be real because I'd want him to be a you know a movie slasher with a shitload of sequels because he deserves it. He only got two, uh, and neither one of them are amazing. Two's not too bad, but three is like, hey. But uh, <laughs> as far as this movie goes, though, it's great. And Candyman character is a terrific horror movie villain. Um, you find out the husband's been cheating on her, and uh, that's why that's the reason that he. You know, is pretty much wanting to get rid of her, and he does. He just wants to drop her off at the end in a mental institution and not try to help her or nothing, because he's a fucking asshole. So pretty much at the end of it, she um, saves the woman's baby by rescuing her from like uh, rescuing the child from like a big funeral pyre they got going on or whatever. And Candyman inside the funeral pyre, he gets destroyed in it as well. That's another thing. It's like it's kind of tricky how exactly is Candyman killed here or whatever in the fire. Uh, it's kind of hard to think of ways to kill somebody who's a ghost, though. But he dies in the fire at the end. <clears throat> and I just love Tony Todd's like line delivery in the movie. How he looks at Virginia Madison and stuff, says stuff like, "It was always you, Helen." <laughs> I, I love that. Um, just his voice is amazing. He should definitely do a lot of video game voiceovers. <clears throat> but uh, but yeah, he gets killed at the end in the, the funeral fire. I'm not sure how he's destroyed at the end. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to explain it. Or, I mean, I didn't understand it exactly. But no, I probably just missed something. If you watch the movie, it, it makes sense when you see it. I mean, because he's like an urban legend ghost, so how is he killed by like physical means with a fire or whatever? I think he's. I think he was like spiritually weakened, if I believe. I watched the movie like the day before yesterday, and I've kind of forgotten just a little bit of it. I mean, yeah, I do love the movie. When I when I watched it, I just gushed over it, and I have seen it before, but it was like years before I watched it a few days ago. But <clears throat> it's hard for me to remember. I think he was like spiritually weakened though, so I'm probably wrong about how he was defeated at the end. It probably does make sense. But anyway, the one thing after that though that that we kind of that uh we kind that kind of doesn't make sense, but at the same time I do enjoy it. Is after Virginia Madsen dies, the, the her uh, husband who's been cheating on her, and been a fuck tar torture the whole movie, basically goes into the um, bathroom and says her name in the mirror three times, you know, and then she pops up with a hook and kills him. So she's become her own urban legend now, just like Candyman. She's her own spiritual entity now, and I like that. I like that wraparound like that, 
And plus, the, the husband is just such a fucktard that I'm just, don't give a shit that he's dead. I'm happy. He deserved a croak. But at the same time, I'm thinking, well, how did she become like this, and why is she murderous or whatever? I mean, Candyman, I kind of took it as, you know, after everything that happened to him, he just lost any goodness he had in him. But her, though, she was pure, pretty much a, <laughs> a really good person. In fact, that she sacrificed her life in a fire to save a baby and died from her getting burned to death. Um, just that, I mean, I just, I don't know. It just seems weird that she would just jump to being murderous later, where she would just kill her ex-husband or whatever. But, I, but at the same time, I'm glad he's dead. Fuck him. But anyway... Yeah, all in all, I'd give this movie four stars. Great horror movie. Highly recommended. Uh, like I said, the only thing I was a little bit confused about is the ending, but that's really just due to my fucking shitty memory. But uh, yeah, this is a great horror movie. I definitely recommend it. Uh, Candyman is a terrific character and deserves way more films. This is probably one of the own, if not the only other Clive Barker like movie adaptation other than like Hellraiser 1 and 2 that's been any count well no I take that back Midnight Meat Train was pretty good I like Midnight Meat Train as well but you can count them pretty much on one hand you got Hellraiser 1, Hellraiser 2 Midnight Meat Train and Candyman. Clive Barker has wrote so many amazing books and he's gotten so many shitty adaptations of his work uh, but yeah just those are the ones I really like you know something? I fucking forgot. I also like Nightbreed. So to speak of that, Hell 4, Nightbreed. Uh, and even other than that, I've actually just now thought of it too. Shit, Lord of Illusions. I like Lord of Illusions. Uh, so yeah, I guess there are a few more a few more good ones than what I thought, but still only six. I mean, out of all of his good writing is still pretty bad in my opinion. I mean, I guess you really can't count them on one hand. But at the same time, well, most of the good ones were directed by him. But yeah. But at the same time, though, just six, when the guys wrote so many great novels and, you know, stories, I'm like, fuck, man, give this guy some more press. Come on, shit. But still, all in all, four stars for Candyman. Great horror movie. I will get to the two sequels. I'll probably just do them in the same video. But I will get to the two sequels soon. But right after this video, I am definitely bouncing in with my Wes Craven uh, Shocker review. So, I will see you guys right after I watch Shocker and then jump in here to do a review. Take it easy, guys.